Just so you know, the tool that I'm using right now is called Explain Everything. It's one of the apps that unfortunately does call, um, cost a few dollars. But it allows you to build interactive pre-recorded PowerPoints, which is pretty sweet. So the chart I have up here right now is known as Gardner's Multiple Intelligence Theory. And as you can see, there are some challenges to it, such as making sure you are typing at the same time. But Gardner's Multiple Intelligence Theory is created by this guy named Howard Gardner in the early 1990s. He's a Harvard professor, and he said that he can have different ways, or a person can have different ways of learning. So what this allows... What this opened up was it wasn't just any more your basic English and math class intelligences. Now there's these different ways that people learn, and the common push, especially for new teachers, has been to try and form lessons to cover all eight of these categories, or as many as possible in a given lesson. Usually five or six, if I remember uh, my professor, Dr. Fuller, correctly, he said that is the target goal. So within a given lesson, we typically can cover the words, um, which would be this reading the lesson, reading the directions, reading about the material. Um, we cover those different words pretty well. In math class, you do cover the logic pretty well in class there as well. What we tend to miss the most is the body smart and the nature smart. Body smart is the ability to physically get up, interact, move around, um, which the iPad does lend itself to that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the class. What this also allows right now is the music smart. It's not just about music, but it's also the audio. So it's kind of a combination of the music smart and the word smart because you're seeing the picture here you're kind of listening to me at the same time. It would be better if I was doing some uh, something else, such as taking my laser pointer and going around talking about music smart. So that way, I'm also grabbing the people who are picture smart, who are seeing it. I could also be typing in descriptions as we're going along. So music smart also covers audio learners and then of course you know take this and adjust it however this is actually a pretty neat little tool uh, the ones I haven't covered nature smarts probably the other hard one to cover that's people who get out and enjoy nature if we look at the people and self smart I've jumped around on definitions with these before people smart tends to be the people who learn better from listening to other people, interacting with other people, group discussions. Uh, self smart is the person who, much like myself, historically prefers to learn on their own, does not want the help of others when learning uh, complicated material, would rather tough it out themselves. Picture smart, you're looking at the whole picture right now. Um, this is probably... A lot of learners, depending on the situation, can look at a picture and memorize where things are in the picture more and have that visual learning experience more than my words. So even just sitting here on the lesson right now, I am covering uh, word smart. Uh, to a degree, I'm covering logic smart because I'm talking about eight different things. So you're thinking about the logical sequence of these eight things. Giving you the interpersonal skills through talking to you, the intrapersonal skills through just you feeling a connection to me, but you also being a self-learner, so that covers those two. Music smart, you're listening to me talk. So the only thing I haven't covered in you sitting and watching this video is the body smart and the nature smart. So what a flipped classroom allows me to do is the next day, okay, I'm going to hit the body smart learners. We're going to have eight students get up 
and take a piece of this diagram from the intelligence theory and build a physical construct about it and talk about their specific piece. That's also differentiating instruction because I can say, okay, you eight need to separate this up. Each of you pick a part that you're most comfortable with and we roll it from there. Or have a student study, take the uh, learning inventory about which one they are the most. Nature Smart's a little bit more tricky. Um, I'm not going to speak on that because of the different curriculum. How Garner's Multiple Intelligence Theory will work. And then, of course, the other theory that you're very familiar with, if I can get this to work, there we go. You can even turn it sideways, upside down. Hopefully I can get it back. There we go. You're very familiar with this as Bloom's taxonomy. I did spell that correctly. Very good. So if Bloom's taxonomy, um, you're very familiar with the lower levels being what we reach to the learner, remembering the facts, understanding, and applying. What the iPad, though, and what a flipped classroom allows you to do is allows for the learner to hit those lower levels at home, remembering, understanding, and applying. So when you come into classroom, you can finish off applying and get into the analyze, evaluate, and create. So in the flipped classroom model, I'll bring up another little text box here, home happens from... Yeah. And this is what's happening in your classroom now. Now you are hitting the higher levels in your classroom and allowing for the student to have a meaningful experience during the day. So in short, that is two brief Summaries on how Bloom's taxonomy, which I just realized I did not put the possessive S. I apologize, English teachers. And, well, let me go in and edit that. It will not. Okay. And how also... Now, as you can see towards the end of the first slide, the audio got messed up because I tried to jump back to the other slide at the end of the second slide, which you probably figured out. What that shows you, case in point, is that this will take time to get used to. You've probably seen a couple places where I should go back and do some trimming. I'm intentionally now leaving those in there for the simple fact that I want to show you that even the ones of us who use technology the most can uh, make some really big boo-boos. And it's okay. This is normal. This is a process. This whole thing is one huge process. So it's going to take time to get used to. This is not going to be overnight success, including for yours truly. So don't be afraid to fail. I'm even going to go ahead and type that. Don't be afraid to fail. Because we're all going to fail at this. But we're also all going to learn from this, which is very important. All right, so get my stupid picture off of there, and we will talk to you tomorrow or whenever we meet.